Okay, so today's lesson, 1.6, we are adding and subtracting decimals. Um, and one thing about chapter one, the beginning of our math course, is going to be doing some review of some subjects and topics that you've already learned. So hopefully today is an example of one of those topics. Um, I'm just gonna do a couple of quick examples maybe to help refresh your memory about adding and subtracting decimals. Um, so let's say you had um, three and five tenths and you were adding um, six and 75 hundredths. Now, you might be wondering, do I need to have my decimals lined up or do I not need to have my decimals lined up? When you're adding and subtracting decimals, you must, must, must have your numbers and your decimals lined up. So this is incorrect. That is the wrong way to add or subtract decimals. So if I take that same problem, three and five tenths plus six and 75 hundredths, that would be the correct way to write it. Now, you'll notice that we have a blank space here. If you don't like that being there, it's throwing you off or confusing you, you can put a zero in as, a, as holding that place, and it won't change your answer at all. So we add five plus zero is five, seven plus five is 13. Our decimal just comes straight down. And sometimes people like to draw a line down where the decimal goes. If that helps you to keep things lined up, you can do that as well. Six plus three is nine plus one is 10. So that's a little quick reminder of how we go about adding decimals. Subtracting decimals, basically the same setup as adding decimals, except we're now we're subtracting. So let's say we have six and 42 hundredths minus four and 35 hundredths. Notice I lined up the decimals. That is the most important thing when it comes to adding and subtracting decimals. They must be lined up. So I can't take five away from two, so we have to do some regrouping. Two becomes a 12, one 10 minus seven. Three minus three is zero. We bring that decimal straight down, and six minus four is two. So two and seven hundredths would be my answer there. So now we'll go on and look at our actual problems in our workbook. The very first problem we're looking at is Amanda and three of her friends volunteer at the local animal shelter. One of their jobs is to weigh the puppies and kittens and chart their growth. Amanda's favorite puppy weighed two and 358 pounds last month. If it gained one and eight hundredths of a pound, how much does it weigh this month? Now, the first thing it wants us to do is estimate, which you're like, oh no, estimating, oh no, dun dun dun. It's okay. This estimating should be a little bit easier. So when we're estimating, all you're going to do is look at your decimal and we're going to round it like we would normally be rounding. So two, and then we have this three after our decimal. Three is less is under that five marker where we would use to go up or down. So we can say two and 358 thousandths. We'll just make that two. One and eight hundredths, that's close to one. And I hope you're filling this in in your workbook along with me. So two plus one is three. So our answer is going to be somewhere around three, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. So now we're going to calculate the sum and it walks us through the step. Add the thousandths first and you'll notice with one and eight hundredths, there is no number in the thousandths place. If you want to put a zero in, you can, but you don't have to. So eight plus zero is eight. Then we're going to add the hundredths, the tenths, and the ones. So eight plus five, nine, 10, 11, 12, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Three plus one would be four. 
bring that decimal point down, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 and 438 thousandths would be how much the puppy would weigh this month. So then it says compare your estimate with the sum. Since the estimate of 3 is close to 3 and 438 thousandths, the answer is reasonable. So the puppy weighs 3 and 438 thousandths pounds this month. So that is our first example. If you look down below, um, I don't have the problem up here on my board, but question number one underneath the example, underneath the unlock the problem, it asks, is it necessary to put a zero after this eight when you're finding the sum? And I just told you a little bit ago, no, it's not necessary, but the zero can help you to hold that place value when you're lining up your decimals. It might help you a little bit. So you can put it in there or not. Either way is fine. And then the next question says, explain how, to, how place value can help you add decimals. Well, it tells us which di digits that we need to add. We need to make sure we're adding the thousandths together, the hundredths, the tenths, and the ones. We don't want to be adding a number that's in the thousandths to a number that's in the hundredths. That's incorrect. That will make our answer wrong. All right, so now we can look over at page 38 at example one. Looking about, looking at a bee hummingbird. Clear my page. So it says, a bee hummingbird, the world's smallest bird, has a mass of one and 836 thousandths grams. And it got messed up here a little bit. A new United States nickel has a mass of five grams. What is the difference in grams between the mass of a nickel and the mass of a hummingbird? Now, if this problem wasn't written out for us, we might be a little bit confused if we should add or subtract. But this word difference is telling us we need to subtract. So the first thing it says is to estimate the difference. So we are subtracting 5 minus 1 and 836 thousandths. Now, 5 is already the smallest it can go. We'll leave it as 5. Now we have 1 and 836 thousandths. Since we have eight in the tenths place, I'm going to round it up to two. So five minus two is three. So that means somewhere around three is going to be our answer. It's going to be our difference. Now we're going to calculate um, the difference. It says calculate the sum, but we want to calculate the difference. I'm not sure why it says sum there. Subtract the thousands first, but if you'll notice, five, they didn't put anything in for the tens, hundreds, or thousands place. I'm going to say put those zeros in because we have to do some regrouping here. So the thousands place, zero minus six, we can't do that. So we have to come all the way over to the five, make it a four. That will turn the zero in the tenths place into a 10, but we have to cross it out and make it a nine because we have to get all the way over here to the thousands. Well, that makes the zero in the hundredths place a 10, but we have to keep going, cross that out and make it a nine. Now we can put the 10 in the thousandths place. So if we have, now we have 10 minus 6, which is 4. We have 9 minus 3, which is 6. And we have 9 minus 8, which is 1. Bring down our decimal point. And now we have 4 minus 1, which is 3. 
Then down here, compare your estimate with the calculated difference. Since the estimate of three, that was our estimate, is close to our answer, three and 164 thousandths, the answer is reasonable. So, the mass of a new nickel is three and 164 thousandths grams more than the mass of a bee hummingbird. And that's actually true. These little tiny bee hummingbirds are really that small. It's crazy. Um, so that's how we go about answering this example. We're going to go right down below that to our next example. Clear this off. So this next example, we have a bit of work to do here because we actually have three numbers that we're dealing with. We have to make sure to use the order of operations. If you don't remember that little saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P stands per, for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. So according to the order of operations, we have to do what is in parentheses first. And it shows you that, perform operations in parentheses. So we have to do this problem first, six and five tenths minus one and 97 hundredths. You need to write this down in your book. Get some practice with lining up your decimals. I'm going to put a zero to hold that place value spot, especially since we're subtracting. We're going to have to be doing some regrouping here. So I can't take seven away from zero, so I have to go to my five and make it a four. That turns my zero into 10. 10 minus seven is three. Now I can't take nine away from four, so I have to go to my six and make it a five, which turns four into 14. So 14 minus nine is five. Let's bring down my decimal. And then five minus one is four. But I'm not done. This is not the answer. We still have an addition problem to do that's outside of the parentheses. So now we have to take this number, four and 53 hundredths, and add three and 461 thousandths. I'm going to put this zero here to hold the place. So one plus zero is one, six plus three is nine, five plus four is nine, bring down our decimal, and four plus three is seven. So the answer to this equation that we have here is seven and 991 thousandths. This is our final answer. We have to make sure that we use all three numbers in our equation, in our expression, okay? So we've done several examples, but I do want to look at a word problem with you. Um, so if you could turn in your word, so it says the average annual rainfall in Clearview is 38 inches. This year, 29 and 777 thousandths. Ah, where'd it go? There it goes. 29 and 777 thousandths inches fell. How much less rain fell this year than falls in an average year? So this word less. How much less rain tells us we are subtracting. Now, it's not asking us to estimate or do anything like that here, so we can just go ahead and subtract. So um, I'm going to kind of do it over here where I have a little bit more space. So we have 38 minus 29 
and 777 thousandths. Now, if you'll notice, we're going to put a decimal point after our 38, and we're going to put those zeros to hold the place value because we are subtracting. It's really important when you're subtracting. So, can't take set, um, 7 away from nothing, so my 8 is going to become a 7. My 0 in the tenths place becomes a 10, but I have to keep going, so now it changes to a 9. That makes the 0 in the hundreds place a 10. I have to keep going, so I cross it out and make it a 9. Now I can make my 0 in the thousandth place a 10. So 10 minus 7 is 3. 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. 7 minus 9 I cannot do, so I have to come over and regroup again. My 3 becomes a 2. 7 becomes 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So, how much less rain fell this year than falls on average? 8 and 223 thousandths inches. And that's how much less rain fell this year than normally would. Okay? Raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you would like me to do another problem with the